First thing we're gonna do is smooth this hair out. This is my Andis Masters Purple Guard number one or three millimeter guard. And we're gonna follow his natural hair growth pattern. The waves are an indicator of which direction we're gonna cut. So as you can see, I am changing my angle with each stroke that I do as I change my position on this head. So if you notice, not a lot of hair is coming off. My guy comes in every two weeks and he is a recurring customer. Brushing, making sure that we find that crown because you don't want to cut the crown too low. Now that we have the top at our desired length, we're going to go ahead and set in our bald line. One thing that I like to do when setting in my line, I wanna make sure that I'm not going all the way around the head on one swoop. You know, you wanna do it in halves. So that way we can ensure that the line is symmetrical on both sides. Once the ball line is in there, now we can go ahead and clear out the rest. Moving on to the next portion, which is the fade. We're gonna start by setting in our guideline. This guideline is gonna mimic the initial ball line that we placed in. The only difference that I like to do is I'll set the back just a little bit wider. If you can see the back is wider than what I did on the sides. The hair in the back of the head tends to be more dense than on the sides. So I like to stretch that area out so that it doesn't look like he has a chili bowl on the back of his head. This will give me room to transition it to where it doesn't look crazy. So for all the beginners out there, what I'm doing right now is I'm taking out this initial guideline. That ball line that we set in, we're taking it out and we're blending this panel together. So we started with the clippers all the way closed, then I closed, opened them up a quarter of the way, and now I just opened them up halfway, and each time I went up about a quarter of an inch, and as you can see, it's coming together, and then I'll work my way down and kind of blend those lines out and just making sure that we're not leaving any dark spots or any harsh lines. As you can see, I can still kind of see my guideline in there, my ball line, but we're taking it out right now with the same thing that we put that line in there with. So I use trimmers to put it in. I'm using those trimmers to take it out. So on the side, I want to show you guys a different method. Right now we're halfway closed and then I'm going to close it up all the way and then I'll open it up a quarter of the way and we'll take this line out so it's doing the same exact job but there's just different ways that you can do it it's really up to you whatever the method is that you have as long as it's effective and it's efficient then nobody can complain about what you're doing so now it's closed quarter of the way and i'm taking it out And so this time around, what we're doing is we close them first, then I'll open it halfway, and then I'll put it on the quarter, close, and take the rest of that line out. Just showing you, like I said, you can do it however you wanna do it. There's no right or wrong way. As you can see, either way, it's blended. So the next step, we grab our number two with our Andis Cordless Masters. And we're gonna go up about an inch and a half to almost two inches. And this is the highest that will go up. I hope that you guys are finding value in this video so far. Make sure that you stick around as well as if you have any questions or comments, make sure that you leave them below and I'll get back to every single one of them. Switching over to our next guard, this is the purple zero. And we're gonna go up about a half an inch and set in our next guideline. After that, we'll take this guard off and we will begin to fade that next panel in that we just created. The fading system for the Andes Masters is gonna be halfway, quarter, then closed. So we're starting as high up as we can go and that's halfway open. Making sure that we don't go into that line that we just set, staying below it, and as we close the clippers, we're gonna go lower and lower. and we'll open and close the lever as needed. And as you can see, we're using the corners of our blade and we're spot checking, making sure that we leave nothing behind. And we're gonna do the same thing on the left side that we just did on the right side, about half an inch. 
or you can say the width of your finger. Halfway, quarter, then close. If you start halfway and you notice that nothing is happening and no line is coming out, then feel free to switch over to the quarter and work from there down. I do like cutting with my Babyliss clippers, but one thing I do love about the Masters is that there is no click system. Whenever you have a pair of clippers that have a click system, you're gonna lose levels in between. So it may be halfway open, then you have quarter of the way, but with a clipper that doesn't have the click system, you can go in between those. So you'll be in between the halfway and the quarter open. You know, that's another link that you can reach and will help to give you a blurrier fade. Now setting in the next guideline, we're using our number one close and we're going up another half an inch. And as you can see, we're getting higher and higher into that two, but the levels are darker and darker. So we'll be able to blend it in without raising the fade up too much. So now I switch back to the zero and we're just gonna fade that in. Same thing, halfway, quarter, close. If nothing's happening at halfway, we'll go quarter and then we'll go close. Just making sure that we don't go too high up with this guard. And as you can see, it's coming out. Anything that gets left, when we close this lever, we can take the guard off and open it all the way up and do the rest of the detailing that way. So now we can throw the number one guard back on there, open all the way up, and we're gonna go a little bit higher than that line that we just created. And then we're gonna start knocking at that line with the masters halfway open and the one guard on it. And that should just about do the trick. And just in case if it doesn't, then we can close up the one or we can throw the purple zero back on halfway open and knock the rest of that line out. But as you can see, the fade is coming together it's blending right on in just as we want it to. So it's all about trusting the process. Now for one of my most favorite parts of the entire service, the beard trim. I enjoy doing this portion because it ties the whole haircut together. It's gonna give them that nice, complete, finished look that everybody's gonna love. And as you can see, I'm always in complete control of my customers when it comes time to lifting your head up, looking to the side. You wanna make sure that you're communicating so that you can do the best work that you can possibly do. Don't allow them to dictate how you work. You wanna raise your chair, you wanna do everything that's gonna make sure that you can work and have longevity in this industry. You don't wanna be have your back bent all over and hurting at the end of the day. <laughs> so as you can see, I started with the framework, hit the bottom, hit the backside, then I'll put the line on top, and then I'll begin to do the fade. The fading portion is just like when I was fading his hair. We're gonna start with the clippers open, and then you go halfway, quarter close, or you can go close, halfway quarter it's really up to you we cut the beard down with the number five this right here is a number two guard on my masters and it's going to do a really good job of blending in from that five to the the one so as you can see i'm just going in detailing looking for any dark spots here's my number one guard i start with it open and i'll begin to close it up and blend it all in Now switching over to my razor. If you notice the line that I put in initially on top, it was not a super crispy line. I didn't dig into his skin because I know I'm gonna follow it up with the razor. And as you can see, I'm stretching his skin. Not only does it make the skin tight, but it assists me in putting a nice curve on his beard. You know, I can pull the skin up and it will help me manipulate that hair so that I can give him a nice line. I have him blow out his cheek, which also assists in stretching his skin. 
And now I'll detail the hair a little bit on this beard before I move to the next portion. Switching over to the other side of his face, we're gonna do the same steps as before. This time around, I didn't edge it up first. I just went straight in and started fading, but all the techniques are gonna be the same other than that. And so I'll speed it up so we can get on to the next portion, which will be edging up his beard on this side as well. So one thing I really want to share with you guys is something that I do that kind of helps me get the beard line placement right because we're not robots, you know, we aren't rulers, we don't have protractors and compasses. So we have to find little tips and tricks to help you get your beard lines right. And so that's one thing I like to do. I'll go stand behind them and look in the mirror from their point of view. And then I'll go back, you know, I might go back two or three times, however many times it takes for me to get it right. And I just wanna make sure that I'm doing the best job that I can possibly do. So I'll get behind them, I'll put my fingers up and I'll just guide it up and I'll see, hey, this is close enough. I don't mind asking the customer, how does that look? Because this is their face. They're the ones who are gonna be seeing it. You know, so I, I don't just rely on my vision, I rely on their vision as well to help me complete the vision that we both have for their desired look. So this is just a little detail work on the mustache, just making sure that we're getting a nice crispy line you know, he doesn't do too much detail on the inside of the beard, but we do clean it up just with the corners of the blade and just getting them all the way crispy. What we're gonna prepare to do is edge up. We're gonna spray it down with a little holding spray. This is lifted from Johnny B. We're just gonna get it in there. It actually dries up pretty quickly and I enjoy using it. Now we're gonna brush it all down and begin from the middle and work our way out. Believe it or not, like this is one of the hardest parts to me. You know, I, I'm always, I guess, self-conscious about it. I just wanna make sure that the edge up is always right. So I slow down, I take my time when it comes to this portion of the haircut because this is like the finishing touches on it. Like this is the main thing a lot of people don't know about good haircuts but they can tell a jacked up edge up so i always take my time when it comes down to this part because i have a fear of giving somebody a really bad edge up but as you see i'm just taking my time and i just want to get it right <laughs> making sure that the angles on my trimmers are good you know because you have to slant these back a little bit or else when you look at them from the front it's going to look like it's sloped towards you leaning forward So I'll spin them towards me, I'm checking it. I'm looking for any curvature, seeing anything that I can bring up a little bit so that it's as symmetrical as I can make it. I'm studying that thing, making sure that it is good as possible. <laughs> so some of you may know, for the new people you probably don't, I don't lay my chair back, I rarely ever lay my chair back. I'll make them look up. The head's leaning on my chest a little bit sometimes and I'll just go straight across with the razor and that's it. So now I'm gonna detail that beard out, getting all the little loose hairs and our look is completed. As barbers, we don't control who comes into our shops, but I'm here to show that with a thorough consultation and proper execution, they can leave out looking like this. Thank you so much for watching this video. If any of it was valuable to you, be sure to like and share. For more videos like this, please subscribe and click on my playlist titled Tutorials. Thanks and God bless.